you guys, you're just getting your money's worth today, right? Ah, okay. You want less of your money's worth? Okay, impedance relationships for two port elements. So we learned one port. We learned how to connect them together. No problem. So let's do two port. So recall from chapter six of the system dynamics text that um, there are two types of two ports energy transducing elements, transformers and gyrators. Okay, the input impedance of one port is related to the input impedance of the system connected to the other port through the transformer and gyrator ratios. Okay, so for instance, say you had this. You had a source connected to a transformer and then you had an impedance out here. You could, I mean, you could represent all of an entire system by Z3, right? You could write an equivalent impedance for the whole thing, just like we did in that last example. So this would be a, a common sort of situation. So let's write the elemental equation for this. Do you guys remember the elemental equation? V1, F1, the general one, where we just have the generalized variables here. So we have the transformer ratio here, and then the negative reciprocal of the transformer ratio. And then V2 and F2. Is that? So that's the elemental equation that we defined before for a two-port element, right? Now consider exponential inputs and outputs. The continuity and compatibility equations imply the following. So I am telling you that it's really not that hard to derive this, but I'm giving you a little bit of a shortcut to say that V1 is related to uh, yeah, is related to Z3, F3 in this way, and F1 is related to negative F3 in this way. And you can do, we can work out what the algebra is, but if you were to take those two equations, so this is V1 equals TF times Z3 times F3, and this one is F1 equals negative 1 over TF times negative F3, and you were to solve for what Z1 is, the ratio of V1 over F1 is what it is by definition, right? Then we are going to get this expression. Z1 of S equals TF squared times Z3. That is a really horrible 3. There we go. So what we're saying, so let's, let's take this result and let's look back at this at this figure. So we're saying that the impedance that's felt at this uh, element here, across this element, it's connected to the source, is, is Z3, the same as on this side of the transformer, times the transformer ratio squared. And like, I, I tried to give you a little bit of a motivating uh, derivation, but I kind of went through it quickly because it's, it's just working through the algebra. But the result is that you just square the transformer ratio and multiply it by the impedance on the other side, and you get it through. So we, we sometimes call this like reflecting the impedance through the transformer. And you just square the transformer ratio. And that's, this is a very general situation. Okay, We can always say there's a transformer here. The impedance on the left side is equal to the impedance on the right side times the transformer ratio squared. Okay? Okay. Gyrators have the elemental equation. It's very analogous, right? So V1, F2 are related to the V2 and F2, the across and through variable on two set. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Good call. 
Keeping me honest. This is when I, when I do those video lectures. It's hard. Like, nobody's keeping me honest. And the GY is called the what? Yeah, or gyrator modulus. Yes. What? In a manner similar to that for the transformer, it can be shown, and I know you guys are going to be shocked by this result, shocked I tell you, that Z1 of S is equal to GY squared times Y3 of S. So the impedance, I'm oh, sorry, the admittance of 3, so the reciprocal of Z3, so we could write it as GY squared divided by Z3 of S. So, is it the whole thing squared or just the line? Uh, so it's annoyingly the case that, that the book uses GY as one symbol here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it is ambiguous, and especially since we're using Y in these, it looks, it's hard to look at. So, yeah, so a GY is just meaning the one term. Yeah. Okay, and I would be remiss not to just do this example. You guys would be so sad if I didn't just do it. I know you guys have lunch now, and I have a meeting, but let's just do this example. Let's just take a couple minutes, right? You guys want to do it? I was late, so I feel like I owe you. I owe you. So consider the fluid system here. What is the input impedance at the piston cylinder? So what impedance is felt at the piston cylinder? Oh, look. This is a mechanical system here, right, the piston, and then it turns into a fluid system for the rest of it. So we have a, a either a transformer or a gyrator happening. So let's draw our linear graph. I know it's impossible. Throw up our hands and walk away. Um, so let's draw a linear graph of this situation. So the mechanical side is just a force that immediately goes into this piston cylinder thing that transforms it into a fluid system, right? So we have a force source, a force source that's connected up directly to this transducer. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to say we're going to figure out if it's a transformer or if it's a gyrator. Um, and this is the this is the uh, piston cylinder situation, and then we're going to have a fluid system after that. So the fluid system is going to consist of what would connect up to the next node here. What would you say? R one, yeah. So R one um, looks like it's a short pipe, and then you have C, which is going to reference where. Ground, and that ground is atmospheric pressure, right? P atmosphere. Um, and this is C. Um, we'll call this 1 and 2. And then, what about this next length of pipe? R2. And then we're going to go to I. Oops. We're going to go to I through I in series, right, because it's a pipe and all the fluid has to flow through both of them. So we do them in series, even though this node here doesn't represent much of anything physical, right? We talked about that. And then we're going to go out to atmosphere. Oh, I ends at atmosphere, right? Crap. I ends at atmosphere. Um, so we could also have an R3 if we wanted to, to the ground as well. And we could set it to zero if we felt like it. No resistance, just flows right through it. Okay, so if you were to look up in the table, in the book, we would know that we have a gyrator here. But really, we know that it's a gyrator because we're going to go from a through variable here. It's going to be related directly to a... And a, and a cross variable. So what is the relationship of a piston cylinder? If you put in a force on the piston, 
How does that turn, what does that turn into? How is it related to what happens in the fluid? It's a pressure, right? A force is related to a pressure through the area. The force is equal to the pressure times the area. So that's a gyrator because force is a through variable and pressure is an across variable. So they're ones through, ones across, so it must be a gyrator. So I'm just going to, and the gyrator is going to have a gyrator ratio. Um, of, of one, oh, 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 actually, um, so GY equals, so the, the convention is to say GY is equal to negative one over A. Um, the book has a little discussion about that. It's, it's just a convention, the negative sign. There's no need for it necessarily. Uh, so let's go ahead and write our equivalent impedance at the source. Okay. So that I is not equal to Oh, right. So I isn't zero. If you wanted to model this output as having a resistance on it, and then R, but so R would be zero in this case. So at last R would be zero because we're saying, oh, it's just open, it's just flowing out, and there's no resistance. So what is Z1? That's really what our question is. What is Z1? Which is the impedance at this at this uh, left side of the gyrator. So we could yeah. So so we know from our formula above. So this formula right here is gy squared time or divided by z three, right? Gy squared or times the admittance. So let's, I'll just write a big slash, over, and big parentheses, uh, over, and the impedance of everything over here, right? The impedance of all of this stuff. And the impedance of all of this stuff is pretty easy to compute. What is the impedance of all of this stuff? It's just kind of like our example a minute ago, right? So R1 plus, this is in series with, but now, we, now we've got something here, it branches, so we can't just keep, just keep adding. So we're going to have to compute these two in series and then these two in parallel, right? So let's start with the parallelism, 1 over 1 over... Uh, Zc, which is actually 1 over Cs, right? Which gives us Cs there. 1 over 1 over Cs. This is Cs. And then we have uh, plus 1 over the impedance of this whole side here. 1 over R2 plus LS, the impedance of I. And then we can simplify, right? But once again, it's a one-liner because, I mean, we could simplify. And if you guys find taking that, like, too many steps at once difficult, I encourage you to just instead write this expression like this. GY squared divided by, and you would say, okay, ZR1, whatever the impedance is of R1, plus, okay, it's going to be these in parallel, so it's 1 over, and it's going to be Z, uh, so 1 over 1 over ZC, ZC, plus 1 over, and then it's the series of R2 and I, so you would say Z R2 plus Z I. Right? And then you could plug in what Z R1 is, Z C, Z R2, etc., and get this expression. But if you want to do it in two steps, 
in multiple steps, that makes sense. Or if you wanted to slow you down even further and do it in like, say, okay, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to combine these two in, into an equivalent one, then I'll combine, you know, uh, then I'll combine this, this, and this into an equivalent one, and then I'll finally do this last one. You can do it in steps and build up. I don't want the the skipping steps to confuse you. It's really a pretty straightforward process. So if you're having any struggles with that, slow down a little bit and do more steps. Sorry? Ah, we didn't do the normal tree, did we? We didn't do the normal tree. You don't need to do the normal tree in order to compute the impedance of it. So, yeah, pretty sweet. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out the extra 10 minutes. I just didn't have quite enough lecturing in my day, so needed a little more. See you guys.